Before you listen to this BBC podcast, I want to tell you why I love podcasting. Hi, my name's Tommy Dixon, and I make podcasts for the BBC. I'm a big fan of stories, always loved a good book. But when I started commuting for my first job, I discovered podcasts. I was blown away by how a creative idea and the right mixture of sounds could take you into a whole new world full of incredible stories. You know, the type that make you go, wow. And that kind of inspired me to give it a go myself, which, to cut a long story short, led to a BBC training scheme and a whole new career giving other people that exact same feeling. So if you want to hear amazing stories that make you go, wow, like I did, they're just a tap or a click away on BBC Sounds. BBC Sounds. Music. Radio. Podcasts. Let's have a little bit of fun. Hello and welcome to the Scottish Football Podcast, kick-starting your day with all the news, insight and analysis you need. It's Tuesday the 6th of February, I'm Phil Goodlad and coming up... I've got to try and enjoy it and try and make the fans enjoy it. Looking at the fans' comments, you know, there's 50% want me and 50% don't, so I've got to convince the other 50% to enjoy themselves while I'm here. It's one of the most eye-catching appointments in Scottish football for many a year. But how will Neil Warnock do at Aberdeen? We'll ask a man. Who knows him well? There's no better manager to play for, and I'm sure, I'm sure, as he's done up teams times in the past, he'll turn Aberdeen round. But how will his new team fare as he face a daunting task in his first game in charge? Because the police are in Cantwell! Brilliant goal for Rangers! We are on the rule over the Don's trip to Ibrox and a crucial battle at the bottom. This is the Scottish Football Podcast. Yes, great to have your company today. We're joined by the Times Scottish football correspondent, Michael Grant. Michael, morning to you. Morning, Phil. What a 24 hours in Scottish football. Yeah, this just feels like an appointment that has been, has been in the waiting for, for years, hasn't it? You know, it's such a classic peak cinch, I think we could call it. You know, the the coming together of Neil Warnock and Scottish football at long last. He's, as we know, he's talked very fondly about Scottish um, in uh, what well, Scotland and uh, Scottish football over the years, he's he's talked previously about wanting to have managed in Scotland, and um, at the age of seventy five, he's finally going to get his chance, and uh, it, it 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 is absolutely fascinating. You can see from the the media coverage, not just in in Scotland but across Britain, um, in the last uh, twenty four hours or so, that it's caught the imagination of uh, of football because he's 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 back in the game at uh, at seventy five. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point. All the back pages today covering Neil Warnock, both the Scottish editions and the uh, and the wider UK editions. Uh, lots to get through with you. We're also going to hear from former Scotland international Paul Devlin about what it's like to play for Neil Warnock. Uh, first, though, let's quickly run through all the latest Scottish football headlines. January's Manager of the Month, Philippe Clement, says he hasn't given any thought to his Rangers side drawing level on points with Celtic. Should they beat Aberdeen at Ibrox tonight? Standing in their way will be the Don's new interim boss, Neil Warnock, who says he plans to have a bit of fun at his new club. Greg McDonald has resigned as manager of League Two side East Fife after 18 months in charge. Falkirk have apologised to the new Saints and say they're extremely disappointed and embarrassed by the disorder outside their ground. That after the Welsh side beat them 1-0 in the SPFL Trust semi-final. And Hibs will host Rangers in the Women's Scottish Cup quarterfinals, while Holder Celtic are away to Montrose. Spartans travel to Livingston, Partick Thistle are at home to Hearts. There's only one place to start, really, then, Michael. I wonder, in all your years in Scottish football, can you remember an appointment like Neil Warnock to Aberdeen? Not the fact that he is a man of many clubs, not the fact that he is a man uh, who is in his mid-70s, but just the fact that out of nowhere, Aberdeen have gone from inexperienced managers to probably the most experienced manager in British football. No, I, I wouldn't say I've, I've known many uh, appointments like this, although it's not uncommon, though, Phil, for a club to go from one extreme to the other. You know, when when I, when you have a, a a managerial failure from one end of the spectrum, in, in this case, a very young manager, it's not unusual for clubs to react by going the opposite way. You know, sometimes you would have a, a, a home club hero, but that doesn't work, you go to a, a foreign manager or something like that. So... In that sense, it's not particularly unusual. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's just because Warnock is such a colourful 
and charismatic figure, isn't it? I mean, everybody knows Neil Warnock. He, he's not been one of the most successful managers in, in British um, in British football. I mean, he's, he's talked to Pataudry about he's not won a cup, you know. He's been a promotion specialist. And you don't get to 1,600 matches or whatever he's had without um, without knowing what you're doing because, you know, you've got Aberdeen become, I think, the 20th club to, to um, be seduced by the idea of Neil Warnock managing them. You know, now you're not around for that long without having proven yourself. Um, but I just, I just think it's one that uh, it's been fascinating watching the Aberdeen fans' response to this because I think at first, and speaking as an Aberdeen fan, I kind of felt it myself. It was like, surely not, you know, surely not Neil Warnock. But I don't know. You, I think everybody's kind of got their heads around it, haven't they? And they've kind of thought, actually. This makes a bit of sense. I, I think it makes sense, Phil. Sorry, I, I think it makes sense in, in, in two levels. One, recently, uh, Warnock has been a bit of a kind of quick fix specialist. Mm. Now, he's got 16 league games at Aberdeen, plus whatever they manage in the cup. Now, if he does well, awards for Aberdeen, because they can get into the European places, and let's see how far they go in the cup. Uh, and secondly... I don't think the manager market is particularly attractive at the moment. I think there's there's candidates out there as a permanent appointment that, that, that seem obvious or seem persuasive. Now, if Warnock's there till the summer, maybe that changes. Maybe the managerial market becomes more appealing to Aberdeen. Maybe what changes is the fact that if he does do well, four months in the job as an interim boss, that becomes then a difficult decision for Dave Cormack to make if you have a manager who, like Barry Robson before him, uh, does wondrous stuff on the pitch and gets Aberdeen up the league and who knows where in the cup. Of course, it's the biggest word in Scottish football, isn't it, if? Yeah, I mean, I think it would be fascinating if Warnock was to do really well and then Cormac and the board are forced uh, forced into that dilemma of, OK, what do we do now? I mean, one of the key things here is Warnock is not Barry Robson in, in the sense of his personal circumstances. Robson was always going to take the job. We don't know if if, um, if Neil Warnock would want the job full time. I mean, he lives in Cornwall for heaven's sake. <laughs> he's seventy five. He's already kind of. I think he kind of persuades his wife he'll take jobs on a pretty short term basis so that he's not away from the family and the grandkids for, for that long. Michael, tonight almost a free hit for Aberdeen, given that they've got a new manager in the door. What about Rangers though? If they win by three, they go top of the table psychologically. How big a moment could this be in the season? It will be big because, I mean, all season we've been talking about, you know, if Rangers win their games in hand and Celtic are always ahead and just ahead and just ahead. That might not be the case anymore from tonight. Um, if, if Rangers do win by three, they go top of the league. Um, question that their form since Clement has uh, taken over has been league winning form. Um, I make it 15 league games, 13 league wins. They've only dropped points in the defeat at Celtic. That's a big if, because it's a big more. It's a big moment in a season that when they lose a, a derby, and they drop points at Petardry when they probably deserved to win it, but they, they they needed a late penalty to equalise. So other than that, they've won all the games. So they're showing the consistency of a league-winning team. Um, forty points out of forty-five, I think, since Clermont took over. He took over a seven-point gap, and tonight we're talking about it could be. It could be Rangers going top of the league. So um, he's done a fantastic job in terms of um, that level of consistency. And you do wonder if it will come down to the derbies now, the remaining two league derbies, because Celtic, there's a wobble about Celtic and there's an inconsistency about Celtic domestically that we've tended not to see over the last few years. They go to Easter Road on Wednesday night and I think everybody's entitled to wonder if they'll win that, albeit Hibs are... uh, are, are struggling too. Another test thing tonight with Rangers at home to Aberdeen, the new Aberdeen interim boss taking charge for the first time. One man who knows Neil Warnock well is the former Scotland international Paul Devlin. He was managed by him at both Notts County and Sheffield United. I've caught up with him to find out what it's like to play for Neil Warnock. It can be very eventful. Um, I was fortunate to have a couple of spells under Neil. 
uh, at the start of my career at Nuts County and then again at Sheffield United. He demands 100% from his players. Uh, and if you give him that, he's a brilliant man to play for. W- what he'll do, he'll, he'll instill um, a siege mentality within the team. He'll get them organised, he'll get them hard to beat and he will get them horrible to play against. We've seen some of the the videos on social media of Neil Warnock in the dressing room. Uh, fair to say it's maybe not for the faint-hearted. <laughs> does, it, does it need to take a particular type of character to react to the the abrasive Neil Warnock? Very much so. Um, you know, it's it, it, it rolled out a lot of times when you hear, you know, people talking about some players need an arm round and some players need a boot up the backside. Now, Neil's biggest strong point to me is his man management. Obviously, you'll see the pictures of him going crazy in changing rooms and shouting and bawling and, and, and on the touchline. He isn't always like that. His man management is absolutely fantastic. He knows who he needs to... Grab round, you know, grab by the scruff of the neck and give a, you know, give him a good shout and that. And he knows the lads he needs to cajole a little bit more and put his arm around them. But yeah, I mean, he was, he's a very, very fiery character. He has mellowed with age. When I had him when he was a younger manager in the early 90s, he was far worse than he is now, I would think. But no, he, he's great. And, and if you do well for him, he's, he's a fantastic manager to play for. I'm feeling old hearing you say that you had him as a manager in the early 90s. I'm not sure how, how you're feeling, but in the <laughs> early 90s, that's what, nearly 35 years ago. Um, yeah, and it, and it was before the Premier League. It was the old first division. Now, a lot of people think there was no football before the Premier League in 92, but I actually made my debut uh, at 19 uh, in the old first division for Nuts County. So that tells you how long ago that was. I was just out of non-league football and there was a few clubs in for me and, you know, Neil sort of took the gamble and, and signed me, which I'll be eternally grateful for because he, he put me on the path to a, you know, a 14, 15 year professional playing career. Paul, do you think that the, almost the image, certainly the clips on social media, um, of Neil Warnock as this fiery character, does that hide a Neil Warnock that we perhaps don't know that you've seen in the dressing room, a more compassionate, considered, approachable boss? Oh, but very much so. Uh, and I think Neil Neil engineers it that way. Um, yeah, he's, he's very approachable. Uh, I always found that, you know, if I needed anything, he was, he, you know, his door was always open. You can go and ask. He's a very compassionate man. You know, that's the side of him that you don't see. And maybe he doesn't, you know... He doesn't want people to see that, uh, but yeah, he's um, you know he's he's very approachable, um, and like I say, if you're in that inner circle, you know he will look after you. Do you have a story that you can share with our audience, bearing in mind the BBC's strict policy on on the use of bad language and in the use of terminology? But do you have a story <laughs> that you can share with us that sums up the new Aberdeen interim boss? Well, in a in a, a brief answer to that, it would probably know if there's no swearing or anything involved. But no, I mean, that, that, there's several times down the years. You know, I, I probably drove Neil madder, you know, more mad than anyone down the years. I remember pre-season trips where I was... I remember once he sent me home from Trinidad after one day. It took us a day to get there. And I'd played up a little bit with the boys on the plane and we maybe had a little bit too much to drink. So we touched down in Trinidad and he sent me back the day after. So uh, that was me getting on, that was me getting on the wrong side of Neil. Uh, so I ended up doing a, not even a day trip to Trinidad. So yeah, he's not he's not one to be messed with, um, you know. But like I say, if you do well for him, there's no better manager to play for. And I'm sure I'm sure as he's done up teams times in the past, he'll turn Aberdeen round. Can I just ask you finally, and actually I'm intrigued about the whole uh, the whole trip uh, and, and the day, because I can't even imagine what you must have been like waiting for the plane to arrive back <laughs> in the UK with Neil Warnock on it. But how do you think he'll do at Aberdeen? He says himself that he's under no pressure. He says himself he doesn't think he can get yeah. sacked in four months. Do you think he can take Aberdeen up the league? Without a shadow of a doubt. I think there's no pressure on him. You look at his age and his experience... You know, he's done it. He's done this loads of times now, going into clubs that are struggling, turn them round. So there is no pressure on him. He's been there. He's seen it. He's done it. You know, look at his his record at getting out of leagues and keeping teams in leagues. Uh, he'll know exactly what to do. OK, it's a, it's a new club and it's a new league, but, uh, you know, it's still football at the end of the day. Uh, and if I was a betting man, uh, you know, I'd bet my last tenner on Neil turning them around, if I'm being perfectly honest. This is the Scottish Football Podcast. The former Scotland international Paul Devlin there with an insight into playing for Aberdeen's new interim manager. 
Uh, Michael, finally, let's turn our attention to tonight's other big game, Motherwell hosting Ross County. Uh, well, in 10th spot on 22 points. Uh, Ross County, a, a place behind them, three points uh, off Motherwell, but they do have a game in hand. I mean, we're speaking about this being a big game for Rangers and Aberdeen. At the bottom of the Premiership tonight, this could be a massive moment. It could be, although I do think there's quite a lot of the jockeying to happen at the bottom of the table. You know, we're still, where are we? We're just into February. Um, yeah, I mean, Ross County have obviously tried to get the managerial bounce from, from changing as well. Macchio and Derek Adams in. Um, uh, Adams has, has, you know, we're talking about... Uh, Neil Warnock being box office, but there's elements of that with Derek Adams as well, isn't there? I mean, he's been, completely. He's been all. He's been outstanding from a from a media point of view. We've kind of uh, devoured his uh, post match stuff, especially. I sometimes wonder what the media manager up at Ross County thinks every time at ten to five when the whistle <laughs> goes on a Saturday. I mean, he must be tearing his hair out. It'll be head and hand stuff at times, but you know, listen. Uh, the counter argument to that is if your club's getting talked about, you know, and uh, your manager's getting talked about, is, is it that bad a thing? But um, yeah, listen, I think both or, or, or all the teams around the bottom of the league might privately feel a little bit of comfort this season. And it looks to me like Livingston are away. Now, Livingston do have the time and the potential points haul to, to come back. I'm not convinced that they will. So then you're it's, talking about the playoff, and then you're talking about the top of the championship. And do you think you could beat possibly Wraith Rovers in in a playoff final? And I think probably Motherwell and North County would think that they would. The, the the reason I mention it being potentially a massive match tonight is that for all that Motherwell have improved under Stuart Kettlewell from their early season, you look at the table and you almost forget that there's just three points between Motherwell and Ross County. And if Ross County were to win tonight, psychologically, I wonder what that does for the Motherwell side. It creates a sense of fear, doesn't it? I mean, I, I think that, uh, I think we probably, when we're on the outside of football clubs, we, we don't ever really appreciate just how unpleasant it must be to be at the bottom of a table and to be, to be in, in that kind of oppressive atmosphere where it's just, what else are you thinking about? Apart from the league table and the prospect of going down. <clears throat> and especially for a club like Motherwell, who have been in the top flight for so long. We, You know, Kilmarnock went down recently after a long, long stint in the Premier League. We're used to Motherwell being in the Premier League. The, the, you know, the, the, the fear of being the management and the, the, the squad that takes you down. It, it, it must be kind of all pervasive for a, a, a club like Motherwell. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that if you're at a club that goes up and down a yo-yo club that it's any easier, but there is a different pressure when when uh, when you're used to being top flight, and also you famously we know that clubs' budgets and Motherwell's budgets are are, are tight. Every penny is a prisoner now. If you go down to the championship, then um, it's not quite catastrophic, but it's certainly uh, it's certainly great. So yeah, so you're you know if, if Ross County beat them. It tightens up the bottom of the league and it, and it just creates more pressure and it creates more apprehension at, uh, at Fir Park. Fascinating night ahead, both at the top and the bottom, for, for the very different reasons, Michael, that you spell out. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today, Michael Grant. My thanks also to Paul Devlin. A great insight, wasn't that, into life playing for Neil Warnock. Uh, keep your emails coming, scottishfootball at bbc.co.uk. We love to hear from you. And if you haven't done so already where you can subscribe and follow the Scottish Football Podcast so you don't miss an episode. Enjoy the football. We'll speak soon. Hi, it's Amy Irons here. I just wanted to tell you that Sacked in the Morning is back for a new series. We are your survival guide to football management. If you want to hear exactly what goes on in the dugouts and dressing rooms across the world, then we are the pod for you. And as ever, I'll be joined by former Scotland gaffer Craig Levine and some of football's best managers to provide all the insight you could possibly need. And you can find it on BBC Sounds. Just search for Sacked in the Morning.